Howdy, howdy! Sue Devil here, and welcome to our Game 3 preparation video for Shadow Online Gaming's YouTuber Tournament. In this video, I'm going to go over the preparation I did for Janet on occasion. He will be playing the Greenskins up against my Beastmen. Now, I had the mirror match where I played the Greenskins up against Black Irons. Beastman, and so the research that I did on both sides was actually very, very beneficial in that, you know, I ran some units to units, got, got an idea of which lords were better and which were worse, and then started trying to look at where, how I could build my army to manage that. No, General Occasion, when you, like, he's a very, very good player, and he has a very diverse group of builds that he'll play. He'll play autogen battles. He'll test out different units. He'll play, you know, very wide. He'll play, generally won't play terribly narrow. He does like to have more of a wide build, but he's very good on the edges. His micro is good, magic, controlling his heroes. Like he has no real weaknesses to his play. Plus on, in addition to that, he has a very broad understanding of the game as a whole. You know which matchups he likes, which units he likes, and the the research that I looked into. I you know I know that I've done some research into this, but I know he'll already know what I know as far as unit matchups because that'll be that'll have been his experience, his played experience. And uh, so when I started thinking of the army that he was going to bring, I look at some of his greenskins builds, and there are some units that he really does like. Uh, like he really likes the the rusty errors. That's uh, a unit that he likes. He likes the mangy marauders as well. And uh, you know, so I figured those two would be be in there for sure. As far as the infantry, I mean, he's gonna know that savage orcs are going to be solid against beastmen infantry, and the same with black orcs and big guns. So he could bring big guns with armor or big guns without that sort of thing he does like Wurzag and on his pig you know what abilities will he bring you know this is the loadout that I had thought would be the most effective the spells again this is the loadout that I thought would be the most effective he's fairly cheap bring the bonewood staff and he's very good at magic so he's probably gonna bring squiggly beasts here something like that I, I i honestly don't know what he's going to bring but i thought Wurzag was very very likely and as far as the other units he's going to want to be able to deal with the cavalry for the beastmen so i i mean i know through my testing that the orc boarboy big guns are quite good he might bring something like that ish bring a couple boar boys for the edges, some mangy marauders, and you know even potentially death creepers for a little bit of skirmish. Put a couple of goblins with the goblin archers with the rusty ears. I've seen him kind of put a package together, something like this. And you know, hard to say what else. I, I don't see him using goblin wolf rider archers or these types of units very frequently, but perhaps he fills out his line with, with something slightly different, like maybe he brings, instead of just goblin archers, could bring a night, goblins, night goblin archers, or something like this, and give these guys some chevrons. You know, hard, hard to say precisely where, where it's going to end up for his army, because his army's actually very difficult to predict because he can play the same matchup with multiple styles you know he's not always going to play the same matchup the same way nor is he going to align his troops up the same way or this type of thing he's going to play the matchup in uh you know wherever it could be uh something he's learned very recently or something he's learned a while ago it's hard to predict what he's going to bring but i figured something like this using some of the same logic that i had 
in the matchup as well. You know, these Death Creepers I liked. Mangy Marauders I wasn't so sure about. I definitely like the Orc Boy Big Guns against the Centigors. They do pretty well. I know he likes those Rusty Errors, and he's going to know the Savage Orcs, the Orc Big Guns. And maybe he brings Savage Orc Boy Big Guns, or, and Black Orcs are going to be a choice, and he does like Wurzeg. Uh, specifically he's just really good at putting out his spells and using his abilities so this is kind of the basic setup that I I mean I didn't expect I couldn't expect because you know it's hard to predict a player with a very wide range of not only unit picks but play styles but he does have some favorites so and he'll know the matchups really well so that was kind of like the basic setup that I wanted to prepare for. The, now for the Beastman, uh, I know Morgor is the the meta pick, you know, because of the the Spirit Essence of Chaos and the Staff of Ruinous Corruption, and he has regeneration. He does poison, so that was going to be my pick, no matter what. I didn't even really look at any of the other lords at all. The and I know he's pretty rugged in the pocket. For my magic, I definitely wanted to bring a Bray Shaman of Death, put him on a Razorgore Chariot so he could get around, give him some improved recharge rate, the Jagged Dagger. I wasn't sure about that miscast chance, and just re really bring a light load out with the Fate of Buna for Black Orcs specifically, and the Spirit Leech for, you know, Wurzag or whoever whoever I wanted to put it on something like that and I wanted a little bit a, of beef and anti-large you know in case we come up against the boar, orc boy boy orc boar boy biggins so I wanted to have the gorble and I was just interested in him, him being sort of a shield because he has that anti-large armor piercing he's good at fighting other lords and I, so I just wanted to strip him down and bring him into that fight now I had a long think about my infantry. I know that the Bessigors lose to the Black Orcs. I know Goreherds and Goreherds with shields lose to Savage Orcs. So there's no way I'm go going to be able to pull a lot of value out of that frontline engagement. So I've done some testing and it's in my testing on formations and I know that if I want something to last, like a weaker unit of infantry, you can just put them in a square as opposed to a wide line, and they will actually last long. So my idea was, I know I'm going to lose the infantry fight, so I'm going to just bring a, a line, a front line of like five Ungor spear herds, and just box them up, and let them hold the line while the rest of my rest of my troops do their job. Now, the, knowing that there's going to be Savage Orcs, I wanted to bring Ungor Raiders. This was something that I never had a chance to play the Beastmen against the Greenskin in any in any uh, matches. I wasn't able, just wasn't able to find the time to actually play a game and test out this build, so I only had the AI to test against. One of the things I really liked about the Beastmen is these guys are actually pretty quick, 36. And, you know, these guys are 31 speed, 37 you know 29 they, they can get around these guys are 35 so and plus they're going to do a ton of damage to savage orcs and you know mangy marauders death creepers they don't have a lot of armor even to orc boar boy big ones they'll not do not too bad they can do armor armor damage back to goblins this sort of thing so i really like the idea of having a front line that we're not meant to win anything, but we're just meant to be like a speed bump for his infantry to allow my Ungor Raiders to go to work, just leave them on skirmish, let them fire at will, and then I don't have to think about this front line at all. I can worry about where I'm going to put the Gorbul, what spells I'm going to use with the Bray Shaman, and where I'm going to locate Morgor. That was kind of my idea. I also wa wanted good edge pressure, so I really like these Harpies. This is this is a unit that you don't see very often, but they're really good. Like 22 melee attack, 38 melee defense, 45 models. Yeah, they don't have a lot of armor and a charge bonus, but their stats are actually quite good. I really liked I really like these harpies, and I wanted to be able to 
to use them to help track down anything on the edges or backline missile fire, this type of thing, support my cavalry engagement and have them up in the air they can get around and go where they want. And then, of course, the the centigors are really, really good. I really also love the centigors with throwing axes because they're fast, they have perfect vigor, you know, they have armor piercing in case he brings something like a spider or something really heavily armored. I can get into the back of those black orcs, you know, do pretty well. And they, they, they're they pretty reasonable in melee with anything but the orc boar boy biggins. But these guys have 62 speed and pretty good armor. And these guys have 84 speed. And they can use their throwing axes to wear them down. So idea was to set these guys on skirmish bring two really put these guys like this and have an edge package where I have centigors with throwing axes on one side and centigors with throwing axes in this harpy in one group so this is my left side group this is my right side group and then try and deal with anything that's out there and if I can get them in to fire up against the black orcs and just let my front line get murdered I mean we're not gonna win any of this anyways so I wasn't terribly concerned about bringing low level infantry I just wanted them to get in the way box them up because I know they'll last longer and don't charge them in because we know from our testing that if you charge them in they'll they'll die faster so the, the way to make really weak units last as long as possible is to keep them in a box and even if you forego their charge bonus which isn't much the charge bonus of six they will la that will be the longest they can possibly last let these ungor raiders just go to work keep them on skirmish and don't even think about them and control this group with the gorbel bray shaman and morgor and these two groups basically that was that was the plan that I came up with after the testing you know I could have gone heavy infantry could have tried something else but I know these these I know these centigors are really good and in some of the t the matches up against the AI that I had now the AI is just it's not a great way to train but it's better than nothing one of the things that I found is that the longer the game lasts the more these centigors shine so because they're fast and they don't lose they have that perfect vigor they keep up their speed and you can just put them on skirmish let them throw their axes and when all their axes out they're actually decent on the charge like their charge bonus is 30 i mean they're going to get some damage in now they don't have armor piercing but you know they're going to they do have armor piercing on the missile they can't their missile damage they can get in and fight so and even these ungor raiders you get them routed off they, they're fast enough generally to route away from most things at 36 speed, but they can come back and just put random pressure on different things. And then we can get Morgor to use his Spirit Essence of Chaos in there and his Staff of Ruinous Corruption. We can get those Chaos those chaos spawn and put them on the right things. And Gorbel, just anti-large, you know, anti-lord, if he's got um, that... Wurzag on a pig, the Gorbil should do very, very well against him. And the Bray Shaman, uh, you know, I wanted him on his Razor Gore Chariot so that he could just get around and get away. And he does have armor piercing and anti infantry, like a very good bonus versus infantry. So this was really my thinking. Now, I don't have uh, any videos to show because I didn't, wasn't able to get in any good testing with these guys. But some of my previous videos that do show these Ungor spear spear herd with shield, not these Ungor spear herd with shields, but some of the the formation based testing that I did with Soulhammer to look at how formations line up and how you can maximize the use of a weak unit. Now I, I think uh, I think I just chevron these guys up, something like this, 66. Um, I, I don't remember exactly exactly what I did for chevrons, but I got very, very close so that I could have th those little extra bits of stat points will definitely help them last a little bit longer in the pocket, a little bit extra leadership. They're not going to last. They're going to get murdered no matter what, but I don't care about my front line. I just want them to last as long as, it, as I can get them to last, 
and then use my other units to sort of draw out the battle and let my front line collapse, let these Ungor Spearmen just uh, kite away, put them on skirmish, and then control these three groups. So that was my basic thinking. Um, I did test on the map, and it's a fairly wide open map. There's actually a really good deployment, so I could have, you know, you know, like I could have really thought about how my deployment goes, but I didn't want to to manage that. And one one thing, Janet does generally like to get right up front and brawl. You know, he just likes to get in there, get his forces going, and then start microing. You know, t you know taking up, you know, forcing opportunities or overwhelming one unit or another really likes to just get there and fight. No, obviously we want that entertainment entertaining. So I didn't want to deploy real, real far back or anything. I just wanted to get in there and fight and let these guys hold everybody off. And my Ungar Raiders go to work. Well, my three groups of my leadership group, my left, my left flank group and my right flank group sort of went to work. So that was my thinking a bit of a short video. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get all these videos out is is a really difficult. To, you know, I have a busy job, and uh, uh, you know it's hard to find the time. And I want to give a full analysis on every little detail. I mean, that's always in my head <laughs> when I start these things. So this is a little bit light as we go in go, going forward. It might remain light. We'll see. We'll see how we do on that. But that's the basic prep work that I did. This is the army I decided on and that's why I decided on the, the army. Those are the choices I made. I had a difficult time thinking about what Janet was going to bring. I really, you know, he could bring something very different but this is kind of, I thought he's gonna bring sort of this infantry corps so that he can just dominate my infantry and he's going to bring some sort of edge pressure, you know, on on one or both sides and definitely Wurzag. I, I definitely figured Wurzag would be the one. He plays on like he knows the meta. Like he doesn't always play on meta. He'll auto gen a ladder battle. <laughs> you know, so he has a very wide range of troops that he likes, but I know he likes Wurzag, so that was my guess that he was going to bring Wurzag and not Azeg or anything else. So there's the prep, the basic outline of my thinking before going into the battle. I hope you found it interesting. Love to hear some comments down below. Like I asked last time, if you've experienced this battle from the Beastman side versus Greenskins, you know, what you like to play or what you found interesting or strong or weak or that sort of thing. And uh, we'll get ready for game number three against Janet on occasion. Hope you found it interesting and I will see you soon.